Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. Having reviewed HelloFresh's Q3 2024 earnings report, I emerged with the impression that HelloFresh stock continues to move into a highly asymmetric position with vast upside, although of course the thesis is not exempt of risks. Let's get deep into it. HelloFresh's unit economics continue to improve driven by a shift towards focusing marketing efforts on higher value customers. This is visible in the rising AE bidder margin, which is up from 3.8% in Q3 2023 to 3.9% in Q3 2024, as you can see in the graph below. And you can see this metric in yellow. The increase has come primarily as a result of HelloFresh increasing AOV, average order value, to 66.2 euros in Q3, which is up 3.8% year over year, and of marketing expenses declining. Marketing expenses as a percentage of revenue are down from 19.1% in Q3 2023 to 18 0.9% in Q3 2024 and the AOV increase is the result of pushing additional products to more affluent customers. So there you can see how the unit economics are clearly improving. The expanding unit economics are also indicated by the company's rising EBITDA margins which do not factor in special items and stock-based compensation unlike a EBITDA. EBITDA margin went down from 7.8% in Q2 2023 to 5.4% in Q2 2023. 2024, but now we are seeing a tentative inflection point. EBITDA margin is up from 2.3% in Q3 2023 to 2.5% in Q3 2024, also suggesting that HelloFresh is now on the path to solve for the previously weak nature of its demand that I discussed in my original deep dive. Indeed, HelloFresh is only a critical pain solver for those that value time over money. By focusing on growth at all costs, HelloFresh was actually prioritizing customers that value money over time but this is now changing and this is fundamentally why the unit economics are improving. HelloFresh still trades at a price to sales ratio of 0.2 as if the company were going bankrupt. However the scenario is turning out to be increasingly asymmetric. The company's process power continues to be notable and unit economics are improving as previously explained albeit timidly for now. In turn although the meal kit operation continues to decline with revenue down 9% year over year RTE which stands for ready to eat. Revenue is up 40% year over year. Meal Kits is a shrinking business with non-zero odds of resuming some degree of growth over time. The latter, RTE, is by all standards a fast-growing business. While I still lack an in-depth understanding of the qualitative demand drivers of the RTE operation, it is evident to me that HelloFresh is making good progress in moving away from being a nice-to-have and towards being a critical pain solver for its customers. Should we see continued progress in this direction and expansion of valuation multiples seems likely and the RTE operation seems to be affording HelloFresh a growing volume of earning power over time with AOV up 4.3% in North America and quote-unquote just 3% in international. The delta, the difference between the two, being due to North America's larger exposure to the RTE operation. So here we can see how RTE definitely has pricing power. Therefore, the combination of the RTE operation with the expanding unit economics can quite compellingly transform Hello. Fresh's income statement going forward. Indeed, I see less recent every quarter for which this company should be trading at such a low multiple of sales. Meanwhile, contribution margin is down 1.3% year over year, coming in at 24.3% in Q3 2024 versus 25.6% in Q3 2023 as the meal kit operation continues to deleverage from the pandemic peak. Yet the quarterly delta seems to be reducing. Contribution margin declined from 28.4% in Q2 2023 to 24.3% in Q2 2023. So that was quite a staggering drop. And now this is seemingly slowing down. According to management, this slower decline stems from continued productivity improvements in the RTE and meal kit operations, the latter being specially pronounced in North America. This alleged increment in efficiency is most visible in the meal kit's operations A EBITDA margin year over year increment that you 
can see in the graph below, going from 5.8% in Q3 2023 to 8.5% in Q3 2024. Hence, although the meal kit revenue is down 9%, and that is what's sort of deleveraging the entire company, because this is a bigger a business segment for now than RTE and has been historically, the operations efficiency is going up considerably. And this adds to my sense that HelloFresh has the ability to optimize highly complex problems, as I first explained in my deep dive. In the Q3 call, I was also intrigued to hear Dominic Richter, the founder and CEO, discuss how HelloFresh is highly capable of predicting the lifetime value of a customer after three to four weeks in the platform. In my original deep dive, I explained why the complexity of the operation of HelloFresh's supply chain essentially requires for a world-class ability to measure and optimize for user lifetime value over time. HelloFresh's supply chain effectively being impossible to operate efficiently otherwise. It was encouraging to hear Dominic confirm this. Here is what he said about HelloFresh's predictive power in the Q3 call. So given that we've been operating now the business for about 13 years, um, we have a lot of data points that we can feed into the different prediction and machine learning models that we have. And so we usually it takes us about three to four weeks until we have very, very high predictive power, how a group of customers will do over the next six, 12, 18, and 24 months. So the big advantage in our model is that you generate data points of a customer every week rather than every month or every couple of months. So now much of HelloFresh's financial performance in the medium term depends on its ability to continue shifting towards more valuable customers, continue buffering the deleveraging of the meal kit operation as demonstrated this quarter by the rising AE beta margin of the meal kit operation and lastly continue growing the RTE business fast while also enhancing efficiency over time. These three bullet points sort of wrap it up. If the company can proceed diligently in these three aspects, I believe that the income statement is going to look much, much better a few years from now. This quarter, the profitability of the global RT operation came in at quote unquote slightly better than break even, meaning that going forward, RTE is set to become accretive to the bottom line. Across HelloFresh's operations, I see continued signs that the company excels at making things more efficient over time. And so I believe that HelloFresh will be compounding on this curve adequately going forward. Meanwhile, the shift towards more valuable customers shows encouraging progress as depicted by the rising A and E beta margins, and the efficiency of the meal kit operation is going up impressively. Additionally, cash production remains positive, thus considerably de-risking the thesis. Remember that when a growth company has a negative net income but produces cash from operations, it's not actually losing money. This quarter, free cash flow came in at 30 million euros, which was unfortunately 15 million euros lower than in the same period last year. This was due to lower A E beta by an absolute 100 million euros across the whole of the operations, but this decrease was in turn driven primarily by severance costs from efficiency enhancing measures and higher depreciation and amortization expenses in Q3. In other words, despite the complexity of the operation, which is quite a handful to analyze, HelloFresh remains a financially viable company with meaningful odds of both enhancing margins and seeing a valuation multiple expansion over time. And so the combination of the two can lead to quite lucrative returns from here. Although, of course, the thesis is not exempt of risks. And if you would like to dive into those, please refer to my original deep dive. For now, I remain on the sidelines as I continue to learn more about HelloFresh. I haven't seen anyone consuming its product and I lack that piece of qualitative information to make a final decision on the company. In the meantime, analyzing HelloFresh is a fascinating exercise for me. The company's financial performance going forward is very much in question, but I clearly see that HelloFresh has tremendous process power. In time, this case will therefore further inform my worldview of whether indeed process power and by extension culture is a more powerful predictor of financial performance than other corporate variables. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed this, can I please ask you one favor? Please share this with one friend whom you think will enjoy it. These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. Thank you very much. Take care and until next time.